we're never gonna make this connection. All right, so I was seated into the next to the last aisle on the plane. As you can see, that took over 17 minutes for me just to get off the plane. That could be the difference between you making or not making your connection. So choose your seats wisely. Travel season is upon us, and if you haven't already booked those tickets to see your friends and loved ones, now is the time to do it. In this video, I'm going to be covering how to choose the best seats for your travel adventure, so let's get to it. For most of us, traveling on an airplane is pretty uncomfortable. The seats are small, it's crowded, and we're just sitting in one position for a long time unless you're flying like business or you know some sort of you know, first class. And even then on certain planes, those seats aren't much better. But what we can do is strategically plan where we're gonna be sitting on the plane to give us the most comfortable ride. And that ride isn't the same for everyone. There are those of us who are definitely aisle seat people and those of us who are window seat people. And most of us are not that center seat person. So let's go over those three classifications of seats and find out the pros and the cons. Start off with that window seat. That window seat for many people is a chosen seat because of a few things. One, it's a little bit cooler. So if you're someone who's a little bit hot all the time, it's generally cooler on the window seat. Also, the window seat allows you to have control of the actual window blinds if they have them on the plane. It gives you a view. And generally, you can lay your head on the side and get a little bit of rest in that window seat. Of course, there are cons about sitting in that window seat as well. Number one, you're not going to be able just to stand up and stretch at all. You're going to have to climb over anyone to get to the aisle, whether that's to go to the bathroom or to get something out of the overhead bin. So if you're going to be sitting in that window seat, I would make sure that whatever's in your personal item bag that fits under the seat in front of you is going to be able to have everything you need so you're not up and down all the time during your flight getting things out. And of course, there are those of us who like the aisle seat because it gives you a little bit more leg room in the sense that if there's not people coming up and down the aisle, you can kind of stick your leg out to the aisle a little bit. Um, it's also a little bit warmer in that seat. It's not getting the cold air from the window seat, so it's a little bit warmer. You're able to stand up and stretch easier. You're able to go to the bathroom without climbing over anyone or get to your overhead bin to get things that you need. But there are drawbacks to that aisle seat as well. A lot of times if you're someone who's got larger shoulders, your elbows are out, people coming up and down that aisle are bumping into you when they're coming on and off the plane or even flight attendants with their carts means you're always having to pull that leg in, pull that arm in and make sure you're not bumping into anyone in that aisle. It also means that you're going to be getting up and out of your seat if anyone in the window seat or the center seat need to get up to go to the bathroom or get something in the overhead bin. So you might wanna be a little prepared to get up and down out of your seat a little bit. So if you have a challenge of getting up and down, it might be that you wanna sit somewhere in either the window or the middle seat so that you're not getting up and down all the time for everyone else. It's also that the seat, um, the storage underneath the seat in front of you is generally a little bit smaller. Of all three seats, that is generally the smallest space. So you'll wanna make sure that your personal carry-on item is gonna be pretty small so it can fit underneath that seat in front of you. Sleeping in an aisle seat can be a challenge because you don't have that rest on the side of the window to put your head on. However, some of the planes have these headrests that actually kind of have a fold out so that you can lean your head to the right or left, but not all planes have those. So you wanna be sure that you have something around your neck or something can help you sleep if you're gonna be sitting in that aisle seat. Also sitting in the aisle seat means that the flight attendant is going to be reaching over you to give drinks or any food service to the middle and window seat person. So if that's something that kind of bothers you, you might wanna think about sitting in the middle or the window seat. Going to the bathroom on a plane can be really a challenge, especially when you see that there's a line and you wanna get in that line or if the bathroom's in the front of the plane, you're not allowed to line up. So you're just waiting for that next person to come out of the toilet. If you're sitting in the aisle seat, you have a little bit of an advantage because you can get up right away to kind of state your claim to get to that bathroom. Whereas if you're sitting in the middle or the window seat, 
you can't really stand up and if you do you still got to climb over everyone and hope that somebody who has an aisle seat in front of you isn't going to step right in your path and take your place in line to get to the bathroom. Now we're going to talk about that dreaded middle seat that no one wants to sit in ever. However, there are some small pros to that middle seat. Number one is it's actually a little bit wider than the window or the aisle seat. I've measured these, can be two to three inches wider sometimes depending on the plane. And number two, that also means that your storage underneath the seat in front of you is going to be bigger. So you might be able to get a little bit of a bigger personal carry-on on board with you and fit nice and tight underneath that seat in front of you versus the aisle, which is also very small. And sometimes your personal carrying won't even fit there and you'll have to put it in the overhead bin. Let's talk front, middle, and back of plane seats. If I'm going to be making a connecting flight, I generally like to sit in the first front third of the plane. So that way when we get to the gate, I'm one of the first people to get off so I can get to my connection. Many times the connections are tight, your flights are delayed, you're going to want to be able to get off and make sure you get to your connecting flight. The con to sitting in the front part of the plane is it's generally colder. So if you're someone who's a little bit cold, you might want to sit in the middle or the back half of the plane. If turbulence really bothers you, you're going to want to sit in the middle of the plane. So not the first third or the back third, but in the middle. That's going to have the least amount of turbulence affecting you. Of course, you know, the whole plane shakes, but it's just like being on a boat or a canoe. One end of the or the other is a little bit more turbulent, whereas the center, because it's stabilized by the wings, has a little bit less turbulence. Cons about sitting in the middle is depending on your flight and the meal service and things like that, that tends to be one of the last areas that gets served. They usually have a flight attendant up at the front and one that starts at the back half of the center and then they work their way and then come back in to get meal service for the center aisle. So are the center seats. So those sometimes will run out of whatever choice you have for meals. So if it's something where you're, you know, not ordering a special meal, make sure that you're sitting on either the front or back half of the plane. Sitting in the back of the plane has its pros as well. So if you're someone who likes it a little bit less crowded, generally the back of the plane is a little bit less crowded and it's going to give you the most chance if you want to get a whole row to yourself the back of the plane is the place to do that. It's also going to put you closer to bathrooms and there's generally two bathrooms in the back of a plane so you have more options and opportunity to get to a bathroom. It also means you are closer to the flight attendants which means if you want something like that extra drink or extra snack it's really easy for you to get back to the flight attendants and ask is there any chance I can get a full can of that sparkling water? If you're someone who needs to stand and get up every once in a while most of the time, unless the seatbelt sign is on, you can get up and kind of wander back there, talk to the flight attendants and get some movement in. So it's a little bit easier to do those things on the back of the plane. Negatives to sitting on the back of the plane is you are the last one to get off. So if you're trying to make a connecting flight and it's close, again, you'll want to be in the front of the plane if possible. Now, it can take as long as 10, 15 minutes to deplane. All right, I'm sitting at the back of the plane. Let's see how long it takes me to get off. All right, so I was seated into the next to the last aisle on the plane. As you can see, that took over 17 minutes for me just to get off the plane. That could be the difference between you making or not making your connection. So choose your seats wisely. If you're back there and it's a close connection, what you'll want to do is talk to the flight attendant ahead of time. This happened to me on a recent flight where I was seated toward, the, seated toward the back and there were seven of us trying to make a connection. We weren't sure if we were going to make it at all, but I asked the flight attendant, is there any way you could possibly help us get off the back of the plane faster because we need to catch a flight? And this was an ending flight for some people. E8, and we are coming into gate E10. My folks who are not going to Oakland, if you guys would do us a favor and allow those folks who are making that very, very tight connection to get off the aircraft first. Once we allow them to get off, I will give you guys the heads up that you can head off as well. I know other passengers. So 
she made an announcement that let people know, hey, we've got some people on this flight that are really trying to make a connector. Could we ask everyone to please remain seated till we get these seven people off the flight? And we were able to make our connection. So this is one of those don't ask, don't get situations. Our flight was delayed. We were not going to make our connector possibly. So the flight attendants were so great. They asked everybody on the plane to please remain seated so that the seven of us who had to make this connector could get off, run to our gate, and we finally did make the flight. I don't know if my luggage is gonna make it, but again, if you feel like your connector may be late or not make it, talk to the flight attendants. They'll do everything they can to try to help you make your flight, including making announcements like that that help you get off the plane first. Emergency exit rows and bulkhead, they are great for people who need that extra leg room, but sometimes you will pay extra to get into those seats. And not all airlines charge extra, but just find out when you're booking, is it extra to sit in that exit row because you need the leg room? Now, if you're going to be sitting in the seats in front of the exit row, you need to be aware that those seats do not recline. Neither do the very last seats at the back of the plane because there's a wall there, they don't recline. So if you're someone who needs to recline a little bit to sleep, those seats aren't for you. But if you're someone who's just gonna be up working or you know, you're not going to be sleeping, those are great seats. A lot of people don't want those seats, so they're generally pretty available when you're booking your flight. So what is my choice of the best seat on the plane? Well, for me, it means I'm going to be in the middle of the plane, but a little bit closer to the front. So that way, if there's a bathroom in the front I need to use, great. And I, if someone keeps jumping up in front of me to use the bathroom, I still have the options to pretty easily get to the back of the plane and get to the bathrooms. If there are people waiting in line to get to the back bathroom, I'm not in the back part of the plane where everybody's standing next to me when they're trying to get to the bathroom. It's also the part where there's the least amount of turbulence and I still get off relatively quickly when I need to get to my connector. As far as an aisle or a window or a middle seat, well, a lot of flights are really packed full these days and depending on where I'm going, will depend on the seat I'm choosing. So if I'm flying on a red eye at night and it's gonna be packed, I'm going to choose a window seat so that I can rest my head easily. If I'm choosing something again, where it's a connector and I gotta move quickly, I'm going to choose an aisle seat. And I rarely choose the middle seat, but if that's all there's left, that's what I have to take. Let me know in the comments, what are your biggest concerns that you have when choosing a seat for your flight? Put those in the comments below. Well, I hope this little video helped you get some ideas about picking seats for your next flight. And if you are getting ready to fly over the holidays, now is the time. Start getting online, getting those seats and those flights picked out because they will be packed and full. But until the next time, remember to juice life, drink the joy, keep life simple. Make sure you don't get stuck in that middle seat. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.